the, the, the bad press you've got. I mean, consistently bad press. Why do you think that is? Because we're bad. We must be really bad. <laughs> the press never lies. I mean, do you think it's been justified, the, the, the sort of reports that have been written about you? They've been exaggerated, and, you know, it's, it's a good story. I mean, I love to pick up a newspaper and read about the bad guys. And whether, whether it's true or not doesn't really interest me. It's just what, a good read. What is a bit sad is, you know, picking up something about, about yourselves, and, and all you read is about um, that band that is famous for doing that and that, and it doesn't say that band are famous for making good music, you know, and that's why we're doing it, really. We're not... We're not playing in a band to uh, have stories saying we're bad boys written about us, you know, it's silly. We're doing it because we, we write music and we like to be appreciated for writing good music. So whenever we or associations in the press are to do with nothing to do with music, it's a bit depressing. What about the problems in Nice when you were put away there? Uh, what happened briefly, it's a very long story, but briefly we, we, we were booked to play a, a concert in Nice University. And the day before we arrived in Nice, uh, the local newspaper had run a story about the Stranglers' European tour and that, like, everywhere we were going, there were riots and vandalisms and muggings, this kind of press, you know. And I imagine what happened at that point was that the university authorities had read this and thought, hell, we've got this lot playing here tomorrow night. Uh, and, and they decided to, to find a way of cancelling the gig. Well, of course, they were under contract and it wasn't that simple. And what they decided to do was to refuse us access to electricity, which is absurd. Consequently, we were faced with the situation of uh, trying to run all our equipment uh, without a, a main power supply. And to overcome this, we hired a generator. And when the generator arrived, they refused to allow it in. Anyway, to cut the, the, the story shorter, uh, eventually we managed to get a limited supply of electricity, but it wasn't enough to run all the equipment. And um, our sound engineer advised us that if we cut down on everything, we could probably get away with it. So we went ahead and tried to play the gig, and after a few minutes playing, everything overloaded and cut out, and after about ten minutes it was obvious that we couldn't continue. So we made an announcement to the people and told them exactly what had happened that we, we couldn't play the gig because they refused to give us the electricity supply. And we said, uh, don't blame us for this, you know, go and ask the university why they're doing it. We don't know. And um, having said that, the, the audience just completely wrecked the place, tore it apart and departed. And then the police arrived after it was all over and, and thought, well, we've got to blame someone for this. So they blamed us for it. How much of the evil image, though, has been just for publicity's sake? Uh, I'm sure most of it has. I mean, it's always blown out of proportion. I mean, that thing we were just talking about was, was a classic. It's not front page news, Stranglers cause riot in France. It sounds, you know, these guys are terrible. But I've told you what happened. You could see why the thing happened, right? If they'd have complied with their contractual obligations, it wouldn't have been a riot. What about contractual obligations, though? I mean, you've, you've had to become involved very much so with the music business over these years. I mean, how do you feel about that? Shit. Well, our, our record company got sold um, to EMI Thorne about three years ago, and you know, no one really consulted us. They suddenly said, oh, by the way, we turned up there one day, and they closed the place. <laughs> <laughs> and we said, what's happening? Oh, we, we've just sold you to EMI. Oh, OK, then, right, where's their address? Go around there, you know. And so we finally found ourselves part of a big corporation which we did, really didn't know anything about, you know, so we've had to um, come to terms with it, really. It is something that you do have to come to terms with, Definitely. I imagine. Mm. I mean, what, do you worry about it at all? I mean, Well, there's a lack of individuality in a place like this, you know, it's a bit like musical chairs, musical jobs. You go in and find someone and they find that they've, you know, moved on and someone else has taken their place. It was the allegations of sexism in your music. What, how do you feel about that? Yeah, now? we admit we're the first band ever to write about girls. Mm. Very silly, isn't Can it? Can I ask you, Andy, what is sexism? Well, I suppose it's... Uh, they, they would say that it, you, you have a, a, the wrong attitude to the women that appear in your songs or the approach to, to women. Well, what's the songs? right attitude? No, I'm asking you the question. It's a serious question. Because uh, I think it's a storm in a teacup. You know, this thing about sexism. Especially what, what, what is it? You did actually quite uh, have fun with the idea, though, didn't you? Because, of course, you, you got the strippers on the stage and all the rest of it. A yeah, lot and of people like um, strippers, you know, I mean, male and female strippers, mm. by the way. So, I mean, what's unusual about that? I, 
I can't see anything wrong with it. Every popular daily paper in this country has strippers in it, you know, and that no one complains about it. Everybody reads it. What, what's, what's the issue? I don't see the problem. I guess they, uh, they're trying to say that sexism is exploiting women. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ah, that must be it. Isn't but employment e exploitation as yeah. well? So every worker in this country has been exploited. Is that the, you oh. know, it's nonsense. It's a, it's a nonsense. Right, La, La Folly, the sound now of the new album, a lot of people are saying it's not sounding like the Stranglers at all. That's tr true, and that's why it's getting played on the radios, because they don't realise it's us. It is a mellowed sound, though, isn't it, don't you think? Well, it's just, we're just more mature. It's not the same, is it? Have you changed, do you think, as people over these, what, six years or so? Six years older, basically, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, how boring if we hadn't. Can you see the band continuing? Sure, why not? Got too much to do. For how long, then? Who knows? I mean, how long are you going to continue working for the BBC?